Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, um, we're gonna have another feeding video today. And um, we've done a few of these now. This is Feeding Frenzy number seven. And um, they're proven to be really, really popular. People really like them. So we actually had a bit of a feed here the other day and um, I managed to catch quite a few of them on camera. And uh, it's always a good thing, even if we're not using the footage for videos, I still quite often film my spiders when I'm feeding them. And it gives us an opportunity because if we see something and the spider dashes away or whatever, and we're like, oh, I wonder what that was. We can often look back and we can check it out. And we'll often see what it was that caught our eye. So it's a good way of keeping an eye on things and seeing what's going on and what's happening. Now, one of the things that um, we've done in this one is you'll notice that when we um, feed them, we hold the roaches on the very tip of their abdomen, right on the end, and using only the tip of our tweezers as well. And you'll see that that way we can avoid the spiders from actually grabbing the tongs as such. It's not normally a problem, but it's something that we just try and do to help alleviate that, that risk. But as you'll see in the video, there's a number of them, and they grab them and they go either side of the tongs, and you'll see it on the film. Right, well, sit back and enjoy this video. I'll see you in a moment. Now, we'd start off today with one of our small slings. This is the Incy Gold. And you'll notice there that we've given that a maggot. And it's also a coloured maggot. Now, we often get asked, you know, is there any danger in giving uh, coloured maggots to our spiders? Well, no, there isn't. It's only a bit of food dye. It's not going to make any difference. But the maggot itself is going to make the world a difference. It's really going to hydrate this little spider. And we don't tend to keep water bowls in with our very, very small spiders. So we rely on the food. And because they're fed more regularly, then, um, you know, it really does help to hydrate them. Look at the size of the fangs on this spider. They are huge for such a small, small spider. And even the smallest sling will tackle a maggot. Now we put this one in there. This is the Egyptian predator beetle. And it's being fed a mealworm there. But I put it in because the sheer strength involved in the mandibles on these beetles, they will literally cut that mealworm in half. And they make very short work of it. Very, very powerful beetles. Look at that. Let's literally just cut it in half. Now this is uh, one of our young female skeleton legs. You see she's just sitting there waiting for food. Boom! Look at that. How fast was that? So, so quick. Now this is a subadult flame knee, the Brachypelma autumn. And just look how quick she is. She is very, very fast. Too quick to even see. Now for a brachy, this girl just does not stop eating. She has got a huge appetite and uh, very rarely does she ever refuse food. Very, very good spider. You can see there she's not particularly bright at the moment. She will be coming up for a molt soon. These guys are very pretty as adults. Now you'll notice here that um, we're, we're tongue feeding this one now. This is the Hattie Hattie, the purple earth tiger. And you can see there that we're holding the roach right on the end of his abdomen by the very tip of our tweezers. And we're allowing the roach to claw away at the webbing. That roach is in fact calling our spider out. And here she comes. Now this girl's a little bit shyer than others. We've got other Hattie Hatties that sit out all day long. But this one's a little bit shy. There she comes. Took it nice and gently. 
back down she goes. I'm a very happy spider. Now this is the Panama Blonde. This is a, a spider that is so underrated, I think. These really are very, very pretty. And again, you'll see there that we were holding it right on the very tip of the abdomen. Now one of the advantages of actually feeding like this, tongue feeding your spiders, is it gives you the opportunity to have a real close look and see what's going on with them. You know, we can get up nice and close and personal. And it also, also teaches our spiders there's not so much to fear. You know, all of these spiders are, are really, really comfortable. And you saw that that one there was sitting out in the middle of the day. Look at the creams and the colouring in that. This one is in fact getting near, ready to molt. She won't be much longer. Normally on her abdomen you will see a real black end to her abdomen. And you can see where it's faded in colour there. So she is not far off a molt. There's many, many things that will tell you when your spider is getting ready to molt. And each species is slightly different. They all give different cues. Look at the eye arrangement on that spider. Very smart. Such colouring. Lovely. You can see we've got the door open. She's no, showing no interest in going anywhere. Now this is another firm favourite. This is the GBB. And as you can see there, she's already got a roach right down in front of her. We dropped that one in there and it sat there for a good 15 minutes and didn't move. So I thought, right, we'll give her another one. And she took that one straight away. Some of these spiders are very, very... Um, sensitive to any kind of movement and that is what spurs them on if the prey doesn't move often or not they will not touch it they won't bother see the color in there very nice it doesn't matter that we leave that roach in there she will pick it up later on and she hasn't long molted out actually she's been molted out now about nine weeks or so so we're slowly building her up and we're going to um, introduce a male very soon I'd just like to get a little bit more weight on that abdomen. Get her in good prime condition first. Now this is a, an avic avic, and you can see there that we got the door wide open, and we're going to get a shot of the underside as that avic takes the prey. And as you can see there, she's caught hold of that roach. Nice and calm, beautiful colouring. You can see there she's also got quite a plump abdomen. This is just where we want her to be. This one is actually getting very near. I think um, she has been paired and we're now just waiting for her to fill out. The one next door to her has actually dropped a sack already and they were paired on the same day, so it shouldn't be too long. Look at the lovely red in that abdomen, then beautiful pink toes, which is where they get their name from. We get to see a real nice close up look of her now. I love all the white dashes in the legs. They almost have a Christmas look about them. Very, very cool spiders. Note how she holds her legs up out of the way of the roach. Always looking to protect their appendages when they're feeding. Now this is a Miranda and this one dropped a sack only a few weeks ago and you can see there that her abdomen was slowly and surely getting bigger. Now look at that, she grabbed the roach, she can feel it, look, but she knows I've got hold of it and that made her think twice. There you go, she can feel that, look, she knows that roach is in there and now she's taken it. Now this is middle of the day. And our pokies are sitting outside, enjoying the, the peace and quiet. These really are one of my favourite pokies. 
I love all these browns, these autumn colours. They really are very, very pretty spiders. So what we're doing now is we she's not long dropped her egg sac, which was successful. Um, so now we're looking at building her up, getting her into a molt, and then she will be as good as new all over again. Lovely calm spider, you see? Pokies are not nervous spiders. Now this is a good example here. This is a maculata or the starburst baboon. And as you can see, we're teasing the web again. We're trying to call her out. It's like, come and get your food. Holding the, the quarry at the very tip. Here she comes. Here she comes. Watch her reaction. Boom. There you go. Now, the reason she let go is because I didn't let go of the roach. I held on to it. And she is actually, in, in actual fact, she, she is a very well-fed spider. And uh, we're just looking for her to molt out. So she grabbed it and then she decided to let go because something weren't quite right. There was a little bit too much resistance there and she let it be. So we just leave it in there now. We will give it a little prod, see if we can get it to go back down the hole. But should it go any other way, she will pick it up in good time. They're very good at hunting for themselves. Now this is another one of our pokies. This is the striata. This female has been paired. And uh, as you can see there, look at that. She's following the tongs outside of the enclosure. Now bearing in mind, uh, we're doing all this on our, um, an iPhone. And we are literally about two or three inches away from this spider. Now do be aware, if you're feeding your pokies like this, many of them will jump just like an avic. And this girl here used to be very, very prone at jumping out at you. So she would literally jump across to try and land on you. And this was when she was younger. She's since calmed down. She's a full grown adult now. And you can see that her abdomen there is a nice size. Look at her colour in there. I'm hoping she is going to produce a sack very, very soon. You can see the eyes clearly there. It looks like she's wearing a mask. Beautiful spider. We are literally an inch or so away from her now. See them lovely yellow flashes under the legs. They use these as a warning when they're in a threat display. That yellow really, really flashes out. Very, very pretty spiders. Now many people say that their pokies are very, very nervous, secretive. We're not finding that here in the beastie room. Many of our pokies will sit out, sunbathing under the lights. We often get asked, you know, pokies are light sensitive. You shouldn't have lights on them. Well, none of these guys seem to be affected by the lights. If anything, I would suggest they actually sit out in them. It's quite incredible. Careful we don't shut our toes in there now. As long as you go nice and slowly, she will move in time as well. No need to frighten her. Here we go. Another very, very well behaved pokey. This girl is a good seven inches or so in diameter. Now here's our big salmon pink. You'd remember we'd done a video of her when she arrived. She is huge. We've thrown a, a hissing cockroach in there for her. She's a very big, strong, powerful spider, more than capable of taking a hissing cockroach. And you can see they're in stalemate now, till it moves. Once it starts to move, she will start to get vibration. She will work out how far away it is, and then she'll make her move. You see how she flicked that with her petty pouts, and now she's calmly just picked it up. Very, very gentle takedown for such a big, powerful spider. They really are quite underrated. The LP, a very, very firm favourite in the spider hobby. Now this spider is oh, quickly becoming one of my all-time favourite pokies, the Subfusca Lowland. 
Just look at the colouring of that spider. There is all sorts going on in there. That is a very, very beautiful creation. Now we're not entirely sure of the sex of this one. We're hoping it's going to be a female. We're feeding her up. She's got a good size abdomen on her at the moment. And I keep saying it's a her because I'm really hoping it's going to be. And uh, you see there she's holding it, holding that quarry up, the, the roach, so that you can't get a grip of anything and drag her around. You'll also notice that she is literally sitting right in the doorway of her enclosure and making no attempt to go anywhere. Again, a very calm and relaxed spider. And this is what we should all be aiming for. There's no need to panic. She has got her whole attention focused on that roach. And she sits out all the time. This spider never hides away. She just lays out in the moss and, uh, yeah, nighttime she has a good wander around. But in the daytime, she just chills out in the moss. Absolutely wonderful to see. Look at the yellow flashes in them legs. She is going to be an absolute stunner when she's an adult. Hopefully she. Here's another one of our firm favourites. This is the Metallica or the Gucci Ornamental. Look at the colour in there. That blue, the yellow flashes. And you notice how gently she's taking that roach. There's been no worry of um, any of our spiders getting damaged fangs because we're tongue feeding. If you're careful and you're sensible with what you do, there is no danger involved. You'll also note we haven't really had any of them try and run up the forceps either. You know, this is all about how you go about offering the food, how keen your spiders are, how well developed and settled they are. These are these are all sitting, all these pokies, this is middle of the day, and all these pokies are sitting outside. Very, very relaxed. Here's another pokey. This is the Ruffalata. Now these are, out of all the pokies, these can be quite skittish. But as you can see there, we've got a female sat on the front glass. We've got the door wide open. We're going to offer the food. Look at that. You see, she felt it. Now she's going to gently take it from the forceps. And she's just going to sit there with it. You'll also notice there that her abdomen is quite triangular in shape. And this is because she hasn't long produced a, an egg sac, which was viable. It was a good, healthy egg sac. And uh, we're really desperately trying to get some weight on her now. So she's getting a little bit of extra food. But you can see there, her abdomen is quite small for a big spider. She is clocking on seven, getting on for eight inch span. She is a big, big girl. So it's very important now that we just get some weight up, get her back to normal, just where we need her to be. It won't take long. Look at the lovely colouring. Unfortunately, the camera didn't pick out the colours on the, on the upper side of her. She has lots of greens in her. Very, very pretty, pretty spider. Now we do like our, um, look at that, door wide open. We do like our pokies here in the beastie room. Here comes another Metallica. Now this is our oldest female. You can see there we're offering her up again. We're going to let her make, make the move. You know, let her work a little bit. There she comes. Now you'll notice how dull her colouring is. And you would have heard me say she is our oldest one. Now with the Metallica, if you've got a dull spider looking more black than she is blue, she is starting to get on a little bit in years. So if you see these at the show and you see a real dark, bit of a drab looking thing really, like this girl, then you will be buying an old spider. She is really getting on. I think she is around about seven, maybe eight years old. I personally really like the black. She's produced a good few sacks now. And she's still good enough to go again. She's she is in prime condition. Look at that abdomen. She's just losing some of the colour, that's all. Now here's another Avic Avic. And we're gonna see how she goes. Look, here we go. 
Look at that, the roach has climbed around. Look at the fangs on that avic. They are either side of the tongs. You see that? Now we often get people say, oh, you know, you'll damage your spiders by tong feeding. You shouldn't use metal tongs. All this sort of stuff. You can see there, she knew exactly where them tongs were and she went either side. No different to us. We have very sensitive toes and we have very sensitive fingertips and we do our best to protect them. These are doing exactly the same. Look how she holds her pedipalps up and her front, fo front two feet. They're held high to stop that roach pulling her around. They're protecting themselves all the time. Very cool spiders, the avic avic. Great ones to breed as well if you're a beginner. Now then, this is a different spider altogether. This is the Chilobrachis species Electric Blue. Now this really is a pretty spider. Now as we look at this one, it's, you might argue that it's not that pretty. Well, she is getting close to a mole. You can see the blue in the legs. That blue, when it catches the light, will literally come alive and it will look like a neon blue. Look at the eyes. Different structure in her eyes compared to the avic and, and the peaceless area. They're slightly different formation. Now we're just getting a real good look at this spider. Now what we're going to do now, we're going to offer her a red runner. This is an adult female red runner. See how she saw that coming and she made a lunge for it. Now look at the blue in them legs. Absolutely fantastic. These really are a very, very pretty spider. And we've got a nice little breeding project going with these and hopefully we will be successful. We just need this one to have another mole and then she'll be ready to go. A little bit young at the moment. You notice how now she's frozen, the roach is frozen, everybody's sitting still. It's just going to be a case now of who moves first. And again, for a, a, a spider that is pretty skittish, as long as we're careful, we keep the vibration down to a minimum, she's not going to do a lot. She's going to stay nice and relaxed. And hopefully, when we come to feed next time, She'll be just as relaxed and we can build on that every time. And this is what we do with our spiders. We build on getting our spiders in a relaxed state. And that way we get to enjoy so much more of them. If you've got a nervous, scared spider, it's going to hide away. So, you know, put your effort into making that spider a happy spider. And you will see a whole lot more of it. Well, I hope you enjoyed these uh, these feeding clips. Uh, we often get asked, can we put up a feeding video? And I think we may try and do one, maybe do one a month or something, or one, one every two months, and uh, try and throw in some new spiders. It's not always easy getting footage of them feeding. Um, and sometimes we feed them and then think, oh, we should have got a film of that. <laughs> it's a very busy time in the beastie room. Here we go. We're going to finish off with our electric blue. Absolutely awesome looking spider. Well then, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoy feeding them, that's for sure. Now then, you would have seen the, what we were talking about with the actual um, tweezers. And we hold the roaches right on the tip. Now this does a couple of things. It gives us a good grip. It's pointing the food in the right direction. If you hold them sideways, why would you do that? You know, turn them around so they're facing the spider. And then you'll see there that if your spider's hidden away, that roach will actually claw at the floor or at the bark or anything. That vibration will wake that spider up and let it know that there's food up above. And it will come out and have a look for it. Now, um, as you would have seen there, some of our spiders 
Immaculata. She came out, she grabbed the, the roach, she was pulling on it, and I hung on to it. If I'd let it go, she would have took that down and finished it off. But because I hung on to it, she sensed that there was something going on, and she let go and decided to go back down in the burrow. Now, uh, this happens from time to time. Other times, they'll fight and hang on to it. You know, it all depends on what kind of mood they're in. She's not particularly thin at the moment, I must say. She's uh, carrying a little bit of weight. So, um, hence, she probably wasn't really that bothered about getting the food. But in that instance, what we do is we leave the roach in there and she will come out and pick that up at a later date. You notice we did give it a poke to try and get it to go down the burrow. It wasn't having none of it. I don't know what its problem was. But um, I guess because she'd already, he'd already met her once, he didn't want to see her again. So, but we leave them in there and we let them run around. And this is one of the good things. With your adult spiders, you can leave roaches in there. I often hear people panicking that, oh, you know, I've got a doobie and it burrowed into the substrate. I've never seen it again. I'm worried my spider. Why on earth would you be worried? It's food. It's going to grab it at some point or another. You know, I mean, occasionally, when we do a rehouse, we'll clear our enclosure out and we might find two or three doobies in the substrate. They've been in there for months, you know? So don't worry about it. It's not going to cause problems to your adult spiders. It's only really very small slings and things like that that we have to worry about. You also notice there at the very beginning, we feed maggots. And these are an absolutely prime thing to feed to our very, very small things, purely because they are harmless. They don't cause any trouble at all. So they're very good and they're very nutritious and they also help to hydrate our young slings, which is really, really important. Really important. It's a good way of getting hydration into your spider without having the fear of putting a water bowl into a very, very tiny sling. And often we see it, don't we? You know, people use um, ink pot lids, which are tiny. You know, they evaporate as quick as you fill them up. So, you know, personally here, we don't tend to bother. With small spiders, we don't bother giving them water. But what we do do is we make sure that the food we give them is very well hydrated, and that does the thing. And because they're slings, they get fed more often. So they're off, you know, they're getting that hydration all the time. So again, you're covering the water issue. If it was an adult spider, it wouldn't get enough from its food. You know, they need more to hydrate them big bodies. And you'll see on some of our girls, you saw some of our Metallicas, big beefy girls they are, you know, so they, they need a lot of hydration. So it's important that you have water for those. Right, I think we've covered a few bits and uh, hopefully you really enjoyed it. I'm now gonna crack on and see if I can get some more footage so we can have another video in the future. Um, we have promised to do a centipede one and I've been going through some of our archives to get some good centipede footage. Um, so yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy that one. It's on its way. Right then. Well, don't forget, be calm, be gentle and love your spiders. And I will see you soon, guys.